ഫുഡ്സ് <laughs> apparent dose of consciousness and was carried to the hospital <clears throat> on recovery from the unconscious state she found she could not move her left leg at all this is story of the this is the video of the patient okay ma you there all you there you there you there the left side is wrong ഇതിനെക്കുറിച്ചില്ലേ examination the film reference are all normal kayya mane ore bit bela kodukanda summa itta mane bela kodukanda summa itta mane bela kodukanda the lower limb pressure again normal by that kayya mane ee kayya mane ee idu marakki nikki ore bit ore bit marakki kayya mane നോമ്പ് ഇതറിയുമ്പോ 
That she is not able to count on the left side, she counted on the right leg only. Vibration again impaired on the left leg only. Left is since it's normal right to left hands. So on examination, find this confirmed left lower limb. We need zero power of all muscles left lower limb. Those of all modality sensation in the left lower limb up to the incoming region. Detail normal bilaterally. Probably major axial site brisk bilaterally, but angle jacks are just illicitable. And are independent bilaterally. So uh, where is the localization and what is likely diagnosis? Non-organic. Okay. <laughs> what made you think it's not organic? Because uh, it cannot happen, no? Because the left lower limb, all the sensations absent. And the things which she, she cannot uh, uh, simulate, which she cannot, uh, the thing, uh, the plantar. But both plantars were... Uh, ex Indefinite. Indefinite, yeah. And the reflexes, uh, she cannot do anything about that. So uh, all, all those are listed normally. Okay. So, sometimes acute stroke can have loss of all sensations. Usually, in acute stroke, um, and as they say, tetris, so can have, even though it is under, it is like you to spare pain and vibration. Acute phase initially one or two days it can have. So what you said is choice absolutely correct, but the clue was okay, the sensations were just limited to up to the hip, no? Yeah, just the hip. yeah. That's also another point. Out. And again, you see that when we do, we did the examine the reflexes. She was holding, see, she's, I have to put, I have to put real effort, left and left lower, you see. And she's putting her pressure backward. That's who was sign, some sign is there, no? Yeah, the left left. So that, that is, that's, from that time onwards, you get a suspicion that it's dysfunctional. And now with eight effort, I could flex her knee. That means she was putting her effort backward. So, so what test will you do now? There are two tests for the for the Hoover's uh, Hoover's test. The other is a soon Put your hand beneath the both these things. Ask him to lift one leg after that. When I try to lift the right leg, no, there is no counter pressure on the. There is excess counter pressure on the left lower limb, but least leg. Telling you that left lower limb is normal. I ask you to see, I could feel the power of the left underneath my hand on the left leg. So I ask the patient to lift the paralyzed leg and look for the counter pressure on the right side. Normally, when she's putting effort, you will get the counter pressure on the right leg, normal leg. But here, there's no counter pressure. Telling you that the patient is not putting any effort to lift up her left lower. If it is paralyzed on the true paralysis, you would have felt real counter pressure on the right leg. There is a normal leg underneath your head. Then the other thing you could do is. Then, then the other thing she can do is ask the patient to abduct. The normal when you base the object the normal leg, you will feel there is a counter pressure on the contact. Ah. As a patient, do keep leg as an object to the normal leg. Okay. If it is too paralysis with the left lower, there won't be any counter pressure. But abduction, abductive pressure there. On the other hand, to ask the patient to object the paralyzed leg. The patient is putting real effort, you find the right normal limit to object. The patient is trying to, the patient will have, in, 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 without a knowledge, the limit will go into object. That is called the Suno. Another thing you see, make the patient, this is another thing I made the patient, will ask her to, uh, I lifted her passively, lifted her leg and followed the fall. 
spread like that. Two, three times you do that, you find it hung up after some time. See that, there is a hung up part. Telling that she is trying to fall in between. So she voluntarily prevents the leg from hitting the rail. The way the intensity will support this way. Look again, it's separate, we can find the tongue up. See that the way the limb falls now. These are the ways by which you can fool the patient to make the power appear. <clears throat> so, this is the sooner subduction test is. It's a similar test using hip abduction, just like the worst test. When the patient is in supine position and asked to abduct the hip against resistance. The examiner's hands are, hands are placed on either side of both thighs to assess the strength of hip abduction simultaneously in both hips. Normal patients, when asked to abduct one hip against resistance, both, wheels, both hip will contract to abduct. In the case of a true organic unilateral leg weakness, while performing this test, it will be noted that when asked to abduct the good leg, this organic, there will be a strong abduction on that side, but only a weak abduction force on the weak leg, so because that weak is really paralyzed. When asked to abduct the weak leg, there will be again a strong abducting force on the good leg, but only a weak abducting force on the weak leg, because that weak side is paralyzed. She's putting effort, so the counter pressure, the pressure go to the contrary set, get a good pressure on the normal set. In the case of a functional or cementiform unilateral weakness, when performing this test, it's to be noted that when asked to abduct the good leg, there will be strong abduction on that side, and also a strong abducting force in the weak leg. So apparently, weak muscle will, will become the abducting force because that's not the leg is not really paralyzed. So when you ask to abduct the weak leg, there will again be a weak abducting force in the weak leg, but also a weak abducting force in the good leg. If the patient is not putting effort, so the condylatric thigh will not abduct. So these are the tests by which you can uh, find out uh, the, the organicity of the unilateral weakness. But this is applicable only in unilateral weakness. But one pitfall you should always keep in mind that this sewers test can be falsely positive in persons with hemi neglect. I, years back, I had made a mistake when I functionally hemiplegia. So, uh, suspected functional hemiplegia, and the worst is just really positive. But ultimately, it turned out to have a bright parietal, top, parietal lobe tumor because the patient had hemi neglect. So, when there is a hemi neglect, the worst test will be falsely positive because the patient is not going to put any effort because neglecting it even though the power is uh, normal. So it apparently looks like a hysterical weakness. So this pitfall, you should be aware. So any questions? Then we'll go to the real good case. Anyone? Shall we go to the next case? Okay, then I would, am I audible? Hello, am I audible to you? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Bindu, shall I go to the next case? Yes, sir. Okay. This is a very st interesting story. <clears throat> the story of a 65-year-old man. He's a high-functioning businessman who works in Dubai most of the time. He was apparently all right till one week back. When one day he slipped and fell down, injuring his left forehead. Two days later, he lost his he lost his voice and could indicate his needs only by writing. He also noticed talking while swallowing liquids. No headache, no difficulty in walking, or any other complaints. So this is a story. Literally acute onset of uh, dysphonia, phonia, in fact and difficulty in I mean, taking uh, liquid foods. 
the, there's a significant past history in this patient. He was detected to have a large pituitary tumor five years back, just detected incidentally, when he went to an ENT surgeon for recurrent sinusitis. And the surgeon took a CT scan to find out about the sinuses. And then the tumor was detected. And, when, and the X-ray so the X-ray was taken. The X-ray was found of erosion of the sinus walls. Then, seeing the X-ray abnormality, he ordered an MRI scan. And that is how a microadenoma was detected. It was a large microadenoma at that time. And it was diagnosed microadenoma because the serum prolactin level was found to be very, very high. So they were thinking that it is a pituitary microadenoma, prolactin secreting one. It was called bromocutin, which has been taken for the last two years regularly. And he was undergoing serial MRIs to find out a regression of the tumor. And the treating doctor said that the tumor says is remarkably decreased. That is, that is in fact, correct also. So this is the background story of the patient. Now, this is the individual. Examining a curve, circular movements are normal. Okay. <laughs> No, at this point of time, may I ask you one question? Can be hysterical aphonia in this patient? So your BD is not moving. And I stopped it for the time being. <laughs> okay. The seeing you know, he is not bringing out any voice. But glyphs are counting one, two, three, and correctly. Can be hysterical aphonia? Me, sir. Wait, video is not moving. I, I stopped the video. I stopped the video. Just ask the question. Can be, sir. It can be. So, so what test will you do to find out the cystic lephonia? The thing is, first thing is ask the patient to cough. The cystic lephonia, cough will be normal. Okay, if it is organic, cough will be abnormal. Okay, let's let's what is the question. Yeah, chomakino or chomakino. Mask it to cough. <coughs> the cough is also affected. You cannot bring on effective cough. That makes it really organic. Let me start examining further. It's got the right ah, and the left. Bilateral tendon, the right tendon is very obvious. In the parallel movement, the right is moving to the left side. Bilateral corrugated tongue. Not in the tongue in any direction. Facial sensations were normal. Neck muscle was weak. Highly weak. I can overcome the sternum or the right hand. Maximum, eh? What is the leak? Ah, what is the leak? 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 Yes, sir. What is the leak? What is the leak? What is the leak? What is the leak? The joy video is playing on me. We can see, sir. Yeah, Joy, some problem with Joy. Yeah, other people are able to see the video. 
Yes, sir. Yeah. Video in the Kanam but in the I think why don't I do one thing? I can stop for the time being is stop and re log in. Exit and re log. Sarb and to be done like his arm boy. Hello? I can show the video once again if you want. No problem. The rest of the muscle power, everything is normal. Straight type the process were normal in the upper end of the He said diabetic. For many years, it's a question of action. Can you, can you admit? Can you eat it? Can you, can you, just one minute. Right, press this here, so. Sensations are all known. Okay. Joy, are you able to rejoin? I can see. I'll, I'll show only show the initial important part. Okay, okay. Then I'll go back. So these are findings I will show. Okay. Okay, this is the okay. An examination, second kidney visual equity was normal, even though you were diagnosed with pituitary Fields were normal and they were normal. Extracular movements were all normal. Fifth, seventh, eighth kind was normal. We should right tenth nerve palsy. Whether the additional mild depth and we can't be certain, but definitely more on the right side. Bilateral 11 and bilateral 12th kind of policy more on the right side. So sometime back in one case discussion, I was told, you know, I, had, I was mentioning about that in acute paralysis, even without wasting, you can have a core like origination of that time. I don't know whether you have um, remember this statement or not. You may feel <coughs> that patient has got an apparent yeah. wasting, yes, that yes, may yes. appear bulky, and may like uh, ups and downs will be there on the tongue. So look at this patient's tongue. This is just only three days duration. They come up with prior to that is perfectly altered according to you. But the tongue appears something like a chronic, uh, something like a wasted tongue. But actually it's not a wasted tongue. It's only because the longitudinal muscles have paralyzed that the, the smoothness of the, I mean, the smooth uh, mucous membrane will not be then become irregular because of the shortening of the intrinsic muscles of the tongue which normally should maintain the tongue in a pointed straight position. So there is so, just got right tenth in a bilateral 11th and, uh, and bilateral 12th in a. More likely bilateral 10th in a because he has got so much of an aponia in this patient. If it's only unilateral 10th in a, we could not have been that aponic. But the palatal movement is possibly asymmetric. Rest of the examination normal. So, Question, where is your localization? Left opercular syndrome. Just opercular syndrome. Okay, anyone else? Any other possibility? Like a college sick card, sir. Okay, college sick card syndrome. And, um, no, I am not a person fair with syndrome. She can just tell me where is a localization. <laughs> 9, 10, 11, 12, sir. Okay. Bilateral 10th and 9th also probably. Uh, 11th and 12th. So, is it uh, intracranial lesion? It is at the site of exit of the nerve, sir. Okay. You also forgot the correct location. Okay. Right. So, any other localization somebody want to tell? Procular versus the bilateral
of a clay versus bilateral jugular fronts uh, last part i did not hear permission jugular fronts sir jugular fronts okay any other possibility bilateral it is a difficult it's difficult to no difficult case bilateral it is difficult docker bilateral without affecting anything parim endelo onnu para ha popular first second better okay any any other possibility neuromuscular okay neuromuscular possibility okay any other pass possibility... hardi ano adu parnadu okay okay no i'll tell you one thing in ocular syndrome will you get such a cross asymmetry to put in these things you can get because um, sometimes acute one you can get bilateral okay but if it is an old one in present and subsequently new one you can get like asymmetry that is correct but it's even a, even a left thing the acute setting can have bilateral features and then it goes to unilateral yeah like if you had already one involvement earlier then another one occurring subsequently you can have that. what is again is um, uh, this thing uh, what you call in apocular syndrome anything else you can tell lavender cough, nerve cough is normal yeah, yeah well, correct the cough, the cough will be is abnormal there then one more thing lavender nerve uh, interesting facial nerve Uh, facial may be involved. But the one other thing is voluntary automatic dissociation. That means what voluntary automatic is voluntary they cannot do anything, but automatically they may be able to sip and swallow. That you didn't. Thing. You didn't examine for that. At least in the video given, yeah. you examined. <laughs> that's correct. That's correct. That's the thing you have to look for. Okay. So I want to be certain. What test I will you do now? You can make him laugh. Like uh, some tickling questions, and he laugh. Uh, how can you get uh, red for change the two? Allah, you can uh, do that and uh, make him laugh. If he doesn't uh, do that, uh, then just not exclude that thing. You must remember that operacular syndrome is not synonymous with cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy is different. Operacular syndrome is different. Allah, saru rasim padi tuja. I forget so. <laughs> okay so that's all we do to these other things uh, anyway anyway we will come to that later on how so to that, sorry, why don't we look for a gag reflex yeah that we can definitely look for that but in acute case the gag reflex may be absent even even can be absent gag reflex not a label thing okay so so what do you want me to do you can do an mri okay mri are you brain or brain ഇൻവോൾവ്മെന്റ് <laughs> 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 retropharyngeal cause and involvement of the nerves together perfect i'll come to that norm part to be a cell let us finish up this thing and then come on by one let's see the other part of the mri also so you can see the mri before uh, let's see the mri only is anything the spacious cell that you should keep in, the, in your back of the mind i would vote for uh, a gillen barre syndrome pharyngeo cervico not okay. cervico just pharyngeal This is a CSO something is in the prepontent space. Okay, let's come to that. This is another MRI. This is the prior sequence. Have you looked at the MRI? I am showing some some findings will be there. Different findings. But if you click close, look at the MRI. The clivus area, sir. Yes, sir. No. Exactly. Good. There is some gross abnormality in the clivus. I will come to that later. So now before so I. The, this mri was shown to find out their brain is normal so is there something in the middle of the pardon is there something in the middle and the posture aspect no no i'll come to that no no see the the whole thing i'll show once again 
I am going to show much, much more, many, many films more. But the abnormality here, you see, this is the clivus. This clivus is eroded, and you can see much more bracketly hyperindex. Not only in the clivus, the infratemporal region also. This is the sagittal controlling the CSF is grossly increased in the CSF space and projecting into the clivus. Clivus is thinned out. Anyway, this picture is shown due to find out MRI is normal. Brain is normal. Well, that's my question, it's not that. No. Now I want to know whether the, now the lesion is in, not in the brain. So it could be outside the brain also, and then the, outside the cranium also, inside the cranium also. So what test will you do in the bedside? And that test will initially also exclude your opocular symptom if it already had in mind. Gag reflex? No. Palatal and gag reflex. So, for the Horney syndrome, in a person with bilateral, invariably you should look for the Horney syndrome. The person with the lower time involvement, if there is Horney syndrome, the lesion is extra cranial outside the base of the skull. Okay, that is not inside the skull. The lesion may be in the skull going down, but tells you you need not scan the brain. You can look for the base of the skull and nasal cavities. Why not in the brain? Why not the. Because if they say, in the brain, the posterior, the lower cane, I'm talking about the lower cane. Now. In the brain, if the hornet syndrome is affected, that means lesion has to be intraaxial. It cannot be extraaxial. No, if, why can't it be in the medulla? Yeah, it can be in the intraaxial is all right. I'm talking about a pure lower cane environment without any long transits. Without any cerebellar, without any pyramidal, okay. that pointing to a lesion, multiple okay. cane. Okay. When you get multiple lower cranial involvement to find okay, out whether it is inside the cranium or outside the cranium, because both can affect these cranials. So these cranials are all coming out through the foramen in the base of the skull, coming up to the through the nasal, back of the nasal pharynx and the upper part of the neck. Something occurring there also can catch out of the neck. If you look for the Horner syndrome, it is there, then you need not concentrate on the inside the brain, inside the cranium. It should be outside the brain. Okay, can you tell again? Pardon? Uh, can you tell again the sentence, sir? Uh, you want me to tell once again? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Sir. Because if you look at the Horner's pathway, the sympathetic descending sympathetic system that comes in the posterior hypothalamus, courses down through the midbrain in the dorsolateral part of the red nucleus, dorsolateral part of the pons, dorsolateral part of the medulla. And comes to the and through the lateral to middle part of the lateral funicular spinal cord and in the seriospinal center that is the CAD1 segment. From there, it comes out through the anterior root of the CAD1 and then ascend in the sympathetic trunk and joins the superior ends in the superior cervical ganglion. From there, it goes through the external carotid, no, common carotid, and the international carotid goes to the uh, respective side. There is a pathway for the Sympathetic system. So, if you look carefully, if the, there is no sympathetic fibers in the posterior person inside the brain stem only, not outside. So, if multiple cranial nerve is there and cornage is also present, either lesion has to be inside the brain stem or it cannot be outside the brain stem inside the cranium, just like a meningitis, etc. You can't get this kind of corner syndrome. Packy meningitis, those things will not produce on this. Because there is no sympathetic uh, nerve fibers there. Okay. In what happens extra is that it is affecting the sympathetic trunk, the superior cervical ganglion, or the, um, uh, the fibers uh, going to the complicated artery. You got the point. That is why the presence of horn is a very important clue. To differentiate and to find out the site, whether it's intracranial or extracranial in a person with multiple local involvement, where you suspect a lesion is extra axial outside the brainstem. Now, did you understand now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So look for the Horner syndrome. So look for the Horner syndrome. Yes. Look at he has got a clear Horner syndrome. The pupil is small and he has got a ptosis on the left side. Did you see the ptosis? Oh. Now you can make out the ptosis. It could be a little devious. Pardon? 
the pharyngeal variant of dbs no <laughs> If there is a mass lesion there, why do you want to think? Uh, Before that, you have to look at a mass. I'll come to that. Come to but that. how can the mass lesion be yeah, it so can, acute? So yeah, three days. Okay. Uh, that is why it's, they, it's bilateral also. Unilateral also can accept, but not bilateral. Uh, that is why the case was brought. He had also head trauma two days back. So by Sanders and why can't he? He's all developed following the trauma. I'll come to that point later. So sometimes tumors behave very oddly, can present acute present. Some day back I had shown you some brain cervical cord neurofema presenting recurrent cortiparesis, coming and improving, coming and improving. Yeah, and then, <coughs> so tumors sometimes can behave oddly. So let us see. We go methodically. <coughs> the lesion is extra <coughs> Let us see any, any lesion there in the external compartment, that's the next aim. So based on the skull effect, that's the affection. I look at the skull base now. This is the CT scan. There is no cliver seen. There is no uh, uh, occipital condyle seen. The base of the temporal lobe, uh, the temporal bone is not seen. The intervenous venous is not seen. It's all eroded. I'll show sure this is a see they see your clivers, everything is gone. Hanging down. This is the occipital contact. I'll show you once again. See the see the occipital contact? How dense it should have been. See that? So all it becomes something like a cyst. That less is okay. There is a CT. Then with the MRI with, uh, so what if you ask for MRI, the base of the spill contest and use the Now look at the picture once again. It is. See, this is the picture. You see that the whole clivus is this raw abnormal tissue, which is hyperindex, which you can see there. If the sensor space is increased and projecting into the clivus, the clivus part is only very thin. Again, so the sagittal cut. The clivus is very thin. These are all the CS. I'll show the previous picture also. I'll show it. In a, in a, I'll come back and show the picture. Then you understand it more better. See, this is the CS widened the CS of space, which is all projecting into the clivus, something like a, what do you call, I don't know, in a projecting into the clivus in the destroyed clivus. The clivus is destroyed, the CS is coming into the clivus. So, this is the T1. Again, look at the epidensity in the clivus part. It's not CSF. CSS, cystic CSS case. Also the coronal cut. This is the T1 pre-contrast. <clears throat> then I will show the contrast. This is the contrast. See the base of the skull is all enhancing with contrast. See that one. See. This is the enhancement you can see the, the, the gate of sphenoid 
drivers region all the con and middle part of the Peter's temporal bone are all enhancing in contrast. In fact, I did not, I mean, the, the previous history I was not even certain because only wife was with the wife came with the patient. In fact, there is a long history back, I'll come to that later on. So I initially thought, see, the, the much, my first diagnosis is skull based osteomyelitis, he being a diabetic for some infiltrating lesion. This is again the prior contrast thin, cannot, cannot contrast thin guts. You can see the whole area is enhancing the contrast. It's also extending into the paracellular region. I think I'll skip these. Yeah, this is and this enhancement is encasing the internal cord artery also. No, no. That's what The whole skull base is enhancing. No, so this is the thing I had in mind. Skull base osteomyelitis, either fungal or bacterial. Or infertile leaves of the base of the skull. <clears throat> now let us see what happened. Means subsequently the uh, two of his relatives came. Then he had the whole story. What had happened previously? Now the illness was done in 2017. That is five years back. See the MRI here. 2017. This is sagittal cut. There's a huge mass in the cellular region going up here with the a hemorrhage inside the mass. So large, most likely it's a pituitary mass or something else we don't know, but a biopsy was never done. The reason I'll tell you later on is this is the one which has happened in 2017. This is the T1, this is the T2. And the platinum level was 8,410 at that time in 2017. That is why they thought it's a macroadenoma and decided to put the patient on bromotriptyl. So, and was put by and subsequent, and then subsequent MRI was done after one year. Those picture I will show. This is the MRI one year later. The whole mass has come down, has become decreased, shrunken, and there's a reproductive CSS space here. This is the T1, this is the T2. Now, we compare with the 2017 T1 and 2018 T1. So, this is the mass that has shrunken. Not totally, but it's affecting there, but much less with the treatment of bromocriptin. This again, comparing T2 in 2017 and 2018. This is the mass that is shrunken and replaced by the CSL space. And then MRI was repeated in 2020. That film, I don't know, it's not with me. At the report, I will, this is from Manoj, it's a reliable radiologist. This infiltrating skull based lesion shows further reduction in the overall dimensions. Lesion is significantly T2 dark, extensive bone erosions in the central base node, skull base noted, prominent insinuations of the CSF into the clivus, expansion of the suprasellar system. T1 hypernal signal in the pituitary gland seen towards the left lateral aspect, no extension through the suprasellar system. The encasement of the lesion in relation to the infant villum is resolved. The mechanical scale is relatively free at present. Lesion reaches to the occipital condyles and part around the foramen magnum. This component also reduced in size. And other things you forget about it. So, in fact, we're seeing that lesion is still there involving the clivus. He was given radiation for the suspect, suspecting his invasive microbiome. But he was never subjected to any biopsy proof. He was given radiation. So this is a 2021 scan. Again, the size is little, little, little less compared to the previous one. This is a T2. Almost the same. And this is a subsequent report. Again, shows further reduction of the mass. This is 2020, this is a 2021. 
not much except the CSS spaces machine were increased. The lesion has become a little more shrunken. And this is the, the first 2017 axial cut showing the extent of the mass in the, in a, from the ethmoid region, sphenoid sinus, middle part of the temporal fossa, clivus, and these are all the extensive mass. This is 2018, the corresponding mass, not much of a change. 2020, that mass has decreased in size. And this is skull, uh, a, 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 a CT of the skull, strain extensive erosion. Even at that time, this is a 2017 picture. This is again 2017 showing the extensive uh, fish. So you compare 2017, now the latest MRA done now, See, this is the mass originally. This is the, that mass has regressed and become CSO space and the clivus has become eroded. There is also some enhancement of the 10th carrier on the right side. Now, so what do you want to do now in this patient? How do you explain the 10th nerve, uh, bilateral 10th nerve, uh, 12th and 11th carrier nerve? Sir, bilateral, this is skull based lesion with the bilateral uh, 12th foramen uh, early before reaching the jugular foramen. No, my question is is it the same lesion causing the deficit or something new which has happened? The same expansive lesion. Okay. Could be the radiation it's causing the problem. Pardon? Radiation causing the problem, radiation. Yeah, that's another thing you have to keep in mind. See that uh, you, you should keep in mind that the mass lesions all along pipe is regressed. Okay, but the the clivar lesions only increase and produce the multiple clivar lesions. So that's possible. Nothing is second is that that's a possibility. In the beginning itself, it might have been esophageal carcinoma extending upwards. Yeah, that's that's a good thought. But the lesion initial was, as you said, from the very beginning is extensively involving. Yeah. But the, the point they, in fact, I wanted, really wanted strongly for the biopsy in this patient after admission. And you said but there to give radiation without biopsy in this case. Yeah, that's the thing. I wanted a biopsy, even though they did not agree for the biopsy, they're sitting later, until later on. But the so could it be, they don't know. Could the it problem, be the hypertrophic pacumen in the distance? No, not hypertrophic pacumen. They do not behave like this. This is not, there's a mass with the hemorrhage inside. The point was that is bromocuptin level was very, I mean, sorry, plactin level is very high and the tumor regressed with bromocuptin. That is the strongest point. Any other lesion, why should it regress? You have seen that from the mass of 2017 to, to next year, it is shrunken. So there is likely to be a pituitary macroadenoma there initially. That is subject to the skull base also, invasive macroadenoma. Now the problem without the increase in the size of the mass, the, the a new cranial nerves has appeared. The two problems, two possibility. One, the mass has grown, going, going downward into the, into the, into the uh, extracranially into the nasopharyngeal region, implicating all the nerves. That's one possibility. Or maybe something unrelated, like a skull replacement geoma or a radiation induced to this thing. Now, how to solve the problem? It need not be to uh, this uh, nasopharyngeal region, sorry, even to the clivus also, it can affect no? these nerves. Yeah, it can, uh, in a, a clivus, in a, no, not nasopharyngeal carcinoma, but any lesion, whatever it is. No, no, it need not be grown to the extracranial aspect, even within the, if it is within the cranium also, it can affect this nerve. No, no, that, that's why the first point, Horner syndrome was there in this patient. No, but I have told oh, yeah. may yes. not be there now. Yeah. Yeah. I think we get for PET scan. Sorry. PET scan. Yeah. Okay. So, anatomy clivus involvement alone will not explain all these cranial nerves. Now, the Look. problem is that the, this right. the lesion has been there. PET scan to find out what? We do think it's a secondary there inside the cranial. No, to differentiate between differentiate between radiation and uh, Ah, okay, okay. Radiation and the metabolic activity to find out that. But right, okay. already, the problem is already there is a lesion there. The base right. of the skull from the very beginning. 
ക്ലൈബസ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ആ ഡോഷൻസ് അല്ലെന്ന് തമിഴ്നാട് ബോർഡറിലെ ആ ചൈസസ് പോലത്തെ ഒരു സാധനം മാത്രമേ റേഡിയേഷൻ radiation induced uh, pratsapadi navalishnai like what's the problem with pet scan sir pet scan can different between malignancy and uh... and the problem is you know they want to work see the base of the skull there's already lesion there our radiation induced um, uh, problem is also affecting the cranius at the same site the that the previous mass lesion will be and then we're taking up the taking up the uh, activity telling that it is a um, uh, mass lesion whether it is previously present now it has occurred we don't know but the radiation uh, scar lesion then maybe biopsy yeah ideally we should have a biopsy that's exactly thing we need so the problem so the first so the first lesion could be a craniopharyngeal with uh, the second uh, now it could be the dural metastasis caused in the cranial nerve involvement and the parenchyma it may be to the radiation induced you know the mass lesion at the very beginning 2017 onwards it was i just showed the picture it's encroaching onto the whole of the base of the skull in the very beginning so this is not it's the age of craniopharyngeal craniopharyngeal and age is all no then second not only that that is better but that has regressed with the prominent this is nasopharyngeal carcinoma my it is no nasopharyngeal carcinoma again the problem is that why should it regress with the prominent and it will not remain like that for 5 years sir will point back sir pardon അതൊരു കാര്യം പറഞ്ഞോട്ടെ സാറേ യാ പ്ലീസ് സാറേ ബയോലാട്രി ഇൻവോൾവിംഗ് ദ ക്രൈൻ നർവ്സ് വിതൗട്ട് എഫക്റ്റിംഗ് എനി ചേഞ്ചസ് ഇൻ ദ ബ്രെയിൻ സ്റ്റം ബൈ റേഡിയേഷൻ ദാറ്റ്സ് ഇൻ ദിസ് നോട്ട് എ കേസ് ദാറ്റ്സ് പോസിബിൾ കേൻ കൻ ദ റേഡിയേഷൻ കൻ ദ ദിസ് ലൈക്ക് വൈ ഷുഡ് പുട്ട് ഇസ് റേഡിയേഷൻ പ്രത്സോപതി ലൈക്ക് ഇൻ ദി കാസ്നോമ ബ്രസ്റ്റ് നോ കൻ എഫക്റ്റ് ദ നർവ്സ് സോ റേഡിയേഷൻ റേഡിയേഷൻ സ്കാർബിലേഷൻസ് വിൽ നോട്ട് ടേക്ക് അപ് ദി പെറ്റ് usually no the 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 clue was i was favoring a mass lesion because the point is that it's a very logical thing you know his cranial yeah. involvement was maximum on the right side and the mass lesion of the basal skull was on the maximum on the right side so even the one cannot totally rule out the possibility of radiation involvement more likely it's a mass lesion growing down that is very simple logic also because you've got a basal skull lesion that is going down like adjoining below that is the cranial involvement the, where is the mass when the, when the, the site where the mass is small that particular the, the same thing can happen with radiation also no, but why should it occur only on the same side as the mass radiation can affect because the, the disease site can uh, excite more radiation and can get disease more easily no you no know, because it is a radiation because you are giving equally to all part ഫീൽഡ് <laughs> എന്താ പറയുക ഗാമ ആണോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ So the, the ultimately what we need is a biopsy. Okay. So the neuroscience was contacted. Neuroscience said it's very, very risky to take a biopsy from that site. If you encroach onto that base of the skull, it will touch the artery. It will bleed like anything. It becomes hardest. But like you said, you can take an easily biopsy from the subtemporal approach because the lesion is extending onto the temporal part. So you can take a biopsy. So we all wanted him to do a biopsy. He was very willing to do that also. 
but in this patient he had certain certain uh, doctor relatives so they were discussing all things in numerous rigorous previously they were not accepting that it is due to the and increase the size of the tumor they think it could be we don't do it by steroid and all so i then had left the meeting so that if the patient is not under my care now it is under our the physician's care yeah. so he started the patient on iv major prednisone not for five days okay so you go ahead and treat and say let's see the response absolutely no response he still was in so then i told him that you were better to get a biopsy done to that thing that's the way we stand now Sir, didn't he have pain, sir? He never. He did not have any pain. His complaint was not. He has no. He has. He has pain because when he was turning the neck to one side, you no, know, he was wincing with pain. There is pain, but he is not. He is. I think he is not able. There was the patient more than uh, more than local infiltration by tumor. No, I, I did not hear. Joy, once again. The lack of pain or the Lack of um, severe pain favors radiation more than uh, infiltrating tumor. Yeah, that's right. But he has pain because he probably the kind of thing he can't get pain for it. Sir, honor skin be the clue that it's the invasive invading lesion. Correct, invading lesion. So the localization for the honor it is in the cavernous sinus or where, sir? No, no, it is in the base of the skull outside. It is it is catching all of the sympathetic trunk, so it is the ganglion or the fibers are coming from that. Before it joins the convoluted artery, they are all going through the skull base, no? So they can get affected there, wherever it is. <coughs> the sympathetic fibers are also going around the internal carotid artery. If radiation can cause nerve involvement, it can cause harness also. Uh, logically, so. Logically so. There is no sure way to differentiate it. Logical thing is that the kernels are more of it the side of the maximum side of the mass. That's the only thing. Otherwise, you can't differentiate. Okay. So it's a different thought. Um, this happened in relation to some head trauma, sir. Uh, yeah, in fact, they say it's related to the head trauma. But probably... sir, uh, in the background of a destroyed livers and uh, uh, very bad bone structure in the base of the skull, can yeah. a head trauma produce some foraminal compromise? Yeah, the that's, of... that's a very logical thing, very very logical thing. But some or other, the trauma should um, affect both sides of the cranium like that. Well, not directly related to the trauma. So how did you solve the problem, sir? Pardon? How did you solve the problem? No, the problem is not yet solved. Rahini, I am petty, do that. Petty, yeah, petty, yeah. But before that, easy thing is to get a direct biopsy. That's the best. Because they are not willing. That's they are not willing. That's only. Petty, no, sir. I am them to get a biopsy. No? Petty is not absolute, but the petty radiation in the petty intake will be less when compared with the tumor. Petty is not a prior person. I don't think it's going to help. It's not an absolute evidence. Okay, shall I go to the next case? This is suspense then. It's a suspense. Yeah. You can see whether the were the area suspect, no, whether uh, the lateral part or the were the tenth or twelfth nerves cross wells involved in the prior bit. The petty is the No, PET has got the resolution is very poor in PET. It can only show the metabolically active lesion. Which all structures are metabolically active? Those things will not be PET in PET scan. A areas inflamed with the radiation. Yeah, that. Yeah, but what is it? Minute we is more on the right or left. Those things uh, yeah. typically in the basal. All inflammatory. Inflammatory changes also you take in this. PET. Okay. So I'll go to another patient. We'll take for one more patient. Story of a seventy-one-year-old female. Old case of diabetes mellitus and insulin pump. Interstitial lung disease, hypertension, and hypothyroidism on treatment. Presently admitted with history of low backache for the last four months, which is more on lying down, but there was no root pain. 
is the paresthesia both feet up to the ankle for the last 3 months this is two episodes of fall two weeks back and both falls occurred while the patient was standing while walking okay for the last one week we noticed jerky movements of the right leg especially when she kept the leg sorry leg over the other one is to low volume speech no complaints pertained in the upper limb no stiffening persistence in mixation no stiffening community impairment so i'll go to the history once again <clears throat> story of a 70 year old female got a comorbidity diabetes mellitus uh, ild hypertension low back ache without any root pain mean neurological problem was paresthesia of the both feet up to the ankle for the last 3 months is to two episodes of fall two weeks back both occurred while the patient was standing while walking the last one week patient noted jerky movements of the right leg especially when she kept it over the other one is to low volume speech no complaints but in the upper limb <clears throat> see in fact i did not see the jerky movement so i asked the bystander of the doctor to demonstrate how the jerky movement was so this is here doctor demonstrating the jerky movement of the right leg one leg two leg one leg okay i noted it okay two seconds like that as much as telling that right that's right leg and is putting on the left side it just like that now the examination മറ്റൊക്കെ <laughs> sound is low the sound is low and when i put it she was that don't appear normal but she was holding the leg i don't know the real is spastic or not the pet spastic by that begin by that more on the right side put a picture ee kaalu neru pokike taate or how was normal putta paadam mulu kedu enne pidichone സംശയിക്കല്ലേ <laughs> ബലം കൊടുക്കല്ല ിംഗ് <laughs> <laughs> I kind of appeared up going, but I am not sure if she has got hyperesthesia there. What are you doing? 
ചെറുവല്ലി പറയണം Now this is the gate of the patient. Problems mainly positive, but not very significant. You could still stand without any power, without body. Even though it is, it's not really good, really okay to not much of a problem in walking. But she fell down with her intent. Some suggestion of a dragging of the right one. Good test. So, hymen function is normal, <coughs> cranialis normal, no obvious dysarthria, motor tone normal in the upper limb, Kore increased stiffness of both the lower limb, Kore whether, whether I do not know whether the patient is holding it, the legs down, power normal in the lower and upper limbs, DTR normal in the upper limb, so slightly well eligible, lower limb brisk knee check bilaterally, and knee check one plus bilaterally, Pandar Kuri up going on the right side, left indefinite. Sensory system normal in the upper limbs, impaired vibration, JPS or both feet. There was painful dysesthesia over the feet. Gait almost normal, Kuri slow gait, Kuri some tracking on the right lower. So, where is the localization and what is likely etiology? Likely diagnosis diabetic neuropathy with uh, seizure, hypoglycemia. <clears throat> okay. Right. Any other possibility? The cortical sensory is normal. Normal, normal. Posterior column. Posterior column, the yeah, upper limb centrally normal. Lower limb also vibration JPS is embedded only over the big toe. And she said a chronic diabetic on insulin pump. Yes, but a postal instability also. Yes, but a postal instability also. Early Parkinson's. Early Parkinson's. PPGD kind of that. Okay, but the head faces it does not look like Parkinson's. And the gait also was it like a Parkinson's. This loss of postural reflex cannot be attributed yeah. by the joint portion loss. Yeah, correct. Loss of, no, no. This postural imbalance is not, is not specific for Parkinson's. See, any condition, suppose you've got excessive rigidity, spasticity, or a postural loss, or cerebellar involvement, they can have postural imbalance. When you pull, they will fall down. In the absence of the, if they, the, if the other features are not there, then you can take it as significant. But agree with this postural quality out of that much I mean, the reason why she fell down. Okay, Parkinson's, a typical Parkinson's, correct? Dindu? 
mm-hmm. you have to exclude a particle lesion. So in view of the jets in the right low limb and the falls, which may be due to the jets also. No, no. Can you tell me once again? Particle we, we have to exclude the particle lesion, sir, in view of the jerky movement of the left, uh, right low yes, limb and the instead of falls, instead of falls also, which may yeah, be yeah. due to the jets also. The cortical means where you do want to post the least bilateral cortical, unilateral cortical, left to parietal medicine. Left to parietal. Okay. That is a probably the right limb is more uh, rigid. It's a kind of diagonal with the right foot. And the plantar is extensed on that side. Hmm. Yeah, that's also a more like an extension on the right side. The involuntary movement are the focal seizures or myoclonus? That does look like a focal seizure, but it comes in between and goes. It's not a recurrent one. Only something like a myoclonic jet like that. No, what do you want? Can we say cortical myoclonus? Can we say as cortical myoclonus? Because, I, I mean, first, frankly speaking, I only saw those two jets only. Okay. Because only the history is that what we have to got. Sir, was there case. an ankle clonus? Sir, was there an ankle No, 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 no. I did, in fact, frankly, I did not look for ankle clonus because ankle jerk was decreased, in fact. Knee jerk are brisk. But you've got a point that in a chronic diabetic, such a diabetic, that kind of a brisk reflux is not that very common. Anyway, what do you want now? No. Okay, MRI brain. Cortical lesion. This is the diffusion weighted sequence. One blood sugar. Blood sugar is normal. I'll come to that. I'll come to that. So, the renal function. I'll come to that. I'll show the one by one. I'll show you. This is the MRI brain. Diffusion. Sorry, a prayer sequence. Abnormal. This is a little cut, even. Okay. So the EEG was done because he had a suspect was it was say walking slowly. I want whether metabolic or co- coexisting factor may be there. So it took an EEG, which is also normal. <coughs> so blood examination showed. It's got a serum sodium of 128. Yeah. Otherwise, normal. No other abnormality could be found. The sugar is also normal. Urea creatinine. Okay, all normal. I did not show they're all normal. The creatinine is, uh, uh, is normal. They're all normal. What's your blood sugar, sir? Then they noted that was normal on that day. It was under control with the insulin pump and it is no abnormality in the blood sugar. So, serum sodium was corrected with oral salt. In fact, the video which I had shown to you was only after correcting the sodium. Because initially, it was a little more dull in walking. So, that's why I said maybe metabolic factors was operating. That's the reason. So, patient improved in her gait. That's a, in fact, the gait which you saw was after correction of the hypermetry. The problem is that are you satisfied to make a diagnosis of the metabolic encephalopathy alone in this patient? Hypernatremic on can cause ataxia. Maybe. Borderline only. If it is producing a recurrent false and all, they can fall because of the flapping tremor or a knee buckling due to the asterisks. But that patient will be slightly drowsy and dull. It will be like not a patient to patient like this. Hypernatremic can cause ataxia. These patients are made to walk. Hmm. So they need not be all that drowsy. Mm-hmm. Sir, so, chronic hyponatremia can present with pictures of Parkinsonism, without altering sensory. Okay, so you all think it's Parkinsonism, but there's a definite weakness. I'm not telling like that. But. And say again, the hyponatremia achieved, make the patient fall like that with such a blatantly intact. Uh, LFT was not. normal, sir. LFT. Pardon? Pardon? LFT, LFT. LFT were all normal, all metabolic, the other things are all normal except for the sodium. That's only showed that many. Right LFT, CKD, urea are all normal. Actually, sir, plantar has to be explained in the right lower leg. Right. So, what is the point? What point says, why did the patient fall? 
a difficult for me to explain. Neuropathy was smile which could not explain her faults. And each except two breasts in spite of her chronic diabetic state. And the plantar was also suspicious in the ongoing. So anything else you need now? MRI spine. My left Okay. Which part of the spine you want? Thoracic Cervical. 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 Okay, this is cervical spine. Tumor. <laughs> it's got a large meningioma on the right side of the compressing the cord. See that one. This is the picture I'll show you. Body is so much compressed. And still, the patient's got only hardly minimal symptoms. That's of the breast reflexes, right? This is the, I'll show the contrast. This is the contrast film. You can marry the patient of the so that's the story of the patient. The thing, what, why I brought the case only because seriously also I did not frankly suspect any meningioma or cervical cord, but something was odd. He has got some pyramidal lesion because the thought was that why did the MRI cervical spine was that this is a chronic diabetic where for reflexes to be on the diminished side. But really good, even the finger pressure is also coming up really well elicitable. Ajax are definitely brisk and some suspicious of the implantar. That is why I thought might maybe a lesion in the cervical cord. That is why I took an MRI. But I was not sure. I never thought it could be a mass lesion. <laughs> so, the, so that Jerko was indeed a clonus. Maybe, maybe a clonus. But it was not what they demonstrated. The clonus were then down without uh, applying pressure. Yeah. Sometimes yes. as a venom can join the challenge, some patient may be keeping it. Some uh, they people people are come to you telling me sometimes they uh, they had a Hello. clonus. Plexus spasm? No, it is not like a plexus spasm. It is moving oh, sideways. It can be myoclonus. It is some kind of a myoclonus. What caused that? I really do not know. The cervical coordination can also cause coordination can also produce myoclonus. So in fact, cervical loss of perception can put it, but that's a different one. That's a something like an asterisk, negative myoclonus. Okay. Can we call it a spinal myoclonus or it's a clonus? The spinal clonus is at the level of lesion. That it may, and you, moreover, it not occur, comes and goes like that. It's usually persistent, remain for a long, long period of time. And uh, rhythmically continued to, continue to occur in that segment of muscles. But the gait is not so, so spastic now, sir, to get the clonus. Uh, gate is slightly spastic, not that severely spastic. Look at, no, look at the gate once again, also the gate once again. See, she has got a dragging with the right lower ear. In the right and left lower limb, you watch, you carefully. She attacks, attacks the right lower limb. Uh, is this, there, is, so there is an added element, the spasticity will be diabetic. See the right and left, see that right and left. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. 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 Yes. So that's the story. So, any doubts? Before we close, okay. So the the, the the idea of bringing this case is one you should be aware of. When, when a person something is odd in the background of a chronic diabetic with respect hyperplexia, you have to investigate that point. The second case, the uh, to the and the idea of bringing the cases to not for the diagnostic part. 
find out whether to differentiate an inter- intracranial versus extracranial lesion. You should always look for a coronary syndrome. That only really tells you that it rules out many any lesions inside the, I mean, inside the brain stem, I mean, inside the cranium, outside the brain stem. That's the two things I wanted to bring this case to you. Sir, how will you explain the postural instability in this patient, sir? What is the mechanism? You know, he had, in fact, peripheral neuropathy as well as a paralytic spasticity, pyramidal lesion. So both may be contributing to that. So postural instability, as told before, See, if you look at any cerebellar lesion or a sensory attacks here, patient, if you just pull them, they fall backward. Because the postural, the balance is maintained with the proper safety input, the labyrinthine input and the visual input. So when they uh, perturb that, they will fall. Yeah, definitely, sir. Yeah. And peripheral neuropathy will actually reduce the uh, pyramidal manifestations also. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay, shall we close it? Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, sir. Good night, good night.